In this video, I want to show you how to solve a polynomial inequality using a table. So the idea is that we are going to take a polynomial like this, and it's an inequality because we want to know where it is less than zero. Well, I want to break this into its factors and figure out uh, whether it's either greater than zero or less than zero uh, next to each of the zeros. So let's get started. The very first thing that you would want to do with a polynomial like this is, of course, break it down. I've already done this earlier, so I'll go ahead and list out all of the factors. If you're unfamiliar with the uh, factoring process for polynomials, check out some of my other videos. There we go. So I have x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 5 is all less than 0. Now be very careful. Do not take each of these factors and set them less than 0. That's not how you want to do this. Instead, let's figure out where each of these factors is equal to 0. Let's see, so the first factor would equal 0 when x equals 3. The second one, when x equals a negative 2. And the last one, when x equals a negative 5. So you want to take each of these values and put them on a number line. We'll be checking around these values to figure out uh, whether the entire thing is either positive or negative. Alright, so I've already gone ahead and started to make this table already. Let's go ahead and put those values on there that we found. So I'm going to put them in the proper order. So minus 5 was the smallest, followed by a minus 2, and then there was a positive 3. So this is like my number line. Now I want to see what's happening around them, whether they're greater than 0 or less than 0. Now, along this side of my table, go ahead and put in the factors of your polynomial. So our factors, that when we broke this thing out, was x minus 3, x plus 2, and x plus 5. This will just allow us to uh, check the pieces of the polynomial where it's positive or negative, and then we'll put it all together in the end. All right. So now we want to take values around these zeros and test them in the appropriate factor. So let's pick something less than a negative 5, maybe something like a negative 6. If I take negative 6 and I plug it into this factor, do I get a positive value or a negative value? Well, negative 6 minus 3, that's definitely negative. Okay, then I continue on to the next interval, so something between negative 5 and negative 2. Maybe a negative 3 is a good one. What happens when I take a negative 3 and I put it into the factor? Well, negative 3 minus 3, still negative. Pick something between negative 2 and 3, maybe 0 is good. Put it into the factor, so 0 minus 3 is negative. And of course, grab something larger than 3, plug it into the factor, see what you get. Uh, in this case, if I try something like 4, 4 minus 3 is positive. So this is keeping track of where this particular factor will be positive or negative. Now let's do that for the other two factors. So again, we'll choose something uh, uh, less than a negative 5, we'll add 2 to it, still negative. Negative 3 plus 2, still negative. Uh, 0 plus 2 is positive, and something greater than 3 plus 2 still positive. All right, on to our last factor. Uh, something less than a negative 5 plus 5, negative. Something between negative 2 and negative 5, maybe a negative 3, will be positive. Uh, 0 plus 5 is positive, 4 plus 5, positive. So now I know what each of the factors will be uh, around these zeros. Now since each factor is being multiplied in the entire polynomial, I want to see what these will be multiplied together. So for the first interval I'll have a negative times a negative times another negative. So negative times a negative would be a positive times another negative, negative. On this next interval I have two negatives multiplied together then multiplied by a positive. So a negative times a negative, that would be positive, times positive, positive. 
Now we have a negative times a positive, so negative times another positive, negative. And in my last one, positive times positive times positive. So this last row in the table corresponds to the entire polynomial. And what we're looking for is, when is it less than zero? That's what our original problem was looking for. And so you can see this happens on two different intervals. Let's write down these intervals so we can represent our solution. So the first one goes from negative infinity all the way up to negative 5. Then we go between negative 2 up to 3. Now since our inequality says uh, when is it strictly less than 0, we don't want to include any of these endpoints. So I'll use a parenthesis around these uh, to show that they are not included. So the solution to my uh, polynomial inequality is everything between negative infinity up to negative 5 and from negative 2 up to 3. Now let's do one more example of this just so you have the process down and you get better at using this table. For this next example, we'll do a big one. 4x to the 4th plus 27x cubed is all greater than or equal to 42x squared plus 445x plus 300. Alright, with all of these inequalities, make sure you get them in relation to zero first. So I'm going to take all of these terms and subtract them over to the other side. That way I'll have a zero. So 4x to the 4th plus 27x cubed minus 42x squared minus 445x minus 300 is greater than or equal to zero. Awesome, okay. Now here's where the factoring of polynomials comes into play. You would use your factoring techniques and break this into all of its factors. Now again, I've already done this before, so I'll go ahead and just list out the factors. So x plus 5 squared, 4x plus 3, and x minus 4, all greater than or equal to 0. So from each of these, I want to figure out, well, where is it equal uh, to 0? This one would be equal to 0 when x equals a minus 5. This one would be equal to 0 when x equals a negative 3 quarters. And the last one would be equal to 0 when x equals 4. So it's these points that I want to put on my number line, and we'll also use these factors uh, on the left side of our table. All right, let's go ahead and put it all in. Remember to start off by writing the zeros on your number line, starting from the smallest all the way up to the largest. So our zeros, we're at minus 5, uh, minus 3 quarters, and 4. The factors that we'll be testing these in, x plus 5 squared, 4x plus 3, and x minus 4. Awesome. Now here's where we get to start testing things out. We'll grab test points from each of these intervals, put them into the factor, and we'll see if they are positive or negative. So let's pick something less than a negative 5, like maybe a negative 6. If I plug it in here, I'll have a negative 1 squared. Well, since it's being squared, it'll make it positive. In fact, you'll notice that since this factor is being squared, no matter what I put in there, it will always make it positive. I'll make that one nice. All right, let's try the next one. So what happens if I put a negative 6 into 4x plus 3? Well, that will be negative. Okay, something between negative 3 quarters and negative 5. Maybe try a negative 1. What happens when you put a negative 1 in there? Well, it's still negative. Okay, something between negative 3 quarters and 4. Uh, maybe 0 is a good choice. That would be positive, because 4 times 0 plus 3 is a positive 3. And something larger than 4, 
definitely positive. Awesome. All right, on to the last factor. Something less than a negative 5, minus 4, still negative. Uh, something between negative 5 and negative 3 quarters, negative 1, minus 4, still negative. Between negative 3 quarters and 4, uh, still negative. And anything greater than 4, now it's finally positive. All right, time to put all of this together. So all of the factors are being multiplied, so we will multiply all of our signs. So in the first one, positive times a negative times a negative. Looks like we are positive. Positive times a negative times a negative. Positive. Now I have a positive times a positive times a negative. Negative. And the last one, a whole bunch of positive things multiplied together. Positive. All right, looks good. Now, in this particular problem, we wanted to know where was it greater than or equal to zero. So let's first write down these intervals where it was greater than zero, definitely positive. So this one was from negative infinity up to negative five, and from negative five up to negative three quarters, and then I had from four up to infinity. Now, since it said greater than or equal to zero, I would want to include each of these endpoints. Because at these endpoints, it's actually equal to zero. We'll put our little union symbols in here. Now, notice this one, the, the two intervals actually overlap. This one goes all the way up to negative five. It includes negative five. And this one also includes negative five and then keeps going. So I'm going to just combine these two guys. So negative infinity up to a negative three quarters. So this entire um, section, they're all positive. Union, four, up to infinity. So this would be the solution to my polynomial inequality. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.